Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is Driver 3 and no it's not the game I'm referring to in the title of this video. Driver 3 was a game that I personally continue to have a love-hate relationship with. It didn't do very well in reviews and user scores were a mixed bag as well. That said it played a big role in my childhood because it was one of the only games that my grandparents' PC could run, and they were the only ones in our family who actually had a computer back in 2004. When this game came out, I thought it would probably be the last in a series that I had grown up playing, but I was wrong, and I actually ended up playing what is still the latest iteration, Driver San Francisco, on Xbox 360 for days on end. This isn't the game I'm referring to in the title either. Though the introduction of the ability to shift between real-life licensed cars in a reconstructed San Francisco certainly made this one deserving of its generally favourable reviews. The game I am talking about is Driver Parallel Lines. It's been 15 years and I still struggle to spell it, but Driver Parallel Lines, or Driver PL, as I'll call it from now on, for me, marks the redemption of this series. There's no denying the fact that it still received mixed or average reviews across all platforms and apparently it didn't sell as well as its predecessor but the PC version currently holds a very positive overall user rating on Steam and it's currently 75% off. I paid just over £2 for this and better still it should run on almost any PC built or bought within the last decade and a half. My Athlon 3000G system with integrated graphics will max it out at 1080p with over 60fps a lot of the time, though admittedly there will be a few drops here and there. If your PC or laptop has loaded this YouTube video then it should be able to play Driver PL. I'll talk a bit more about performance later, but first let me tell you why this is what I'd call an underrated hidden gem. Now back in 2006, if a company made an open world game with cars, it would immediately get compared to Grand Theft Auto. I don't think I've ever read the term GTA clone more than I have when looking up old reviews of driver games. The problem with comparisons like this is that anything a game does well gets noticed, but it inevitably gets compared to how well GTA does it. It's not surprising this happened considering that GTA San Andreas had come out just a couple of years before this and was still the benchmark for open world action. Not to mention that Vice City was still relatively fresh in the minds of a lot of gamers no doubt as well. There's certainly no denying that this game does share certain elements with GTA like a wanted system, the ability to knock over pedestrians and annihilate street furniture but The Simpsons Hit and Run had all of that as well and no one ever said that this is a clone of that. It's always fine to point out similarities with features of certain games but I don't think it's fair to compare every aspect of two unrelated titles based on the fact that they fall into the same genre, especially when Driver Parallel Lines is a fun game in its own right. Now the absolute best part of this game has got to be its setting. Taking place in New York City during both 1978 and 2006, Driver PL puts you in the shoes of TK, a young wheelman who at the age of 18 gets sentenced to serve 28 years in prison. When he gets released it's 2006 and the journey for revenge begins. Now I don't want to give too much away, uh, really anything away story wise, but because the game takes place in both the 70s and 2000s, the weapons, vehicles, scenery, pedestrians and overall look of the game changes as you play. The sepia tinted 1970s New York City is more enjoyable for me. The soundtrack is better, the vehicles are better and the pedestrians go by with more of a spring in their step. It seems like a more laid back, pleasant place to be and that atmosphere is portrayed really well through these different touches. Now ironically I've read that 70s New York wasn't a very nice place to be but I didn't exist then so I can't say too much about that. Fast forward to 2006 and the tones are more neutral, the vehicles are different and while there are some locations that still look nearly identical, albeit aside from some slight environmental tweaks, other locations have been completely altered to reflect unfortunate real world changes. 
The player character also looks older, as you'd expect, and the pedestrians that walk by you are clothed in less expressive garments. This is 2006 alright. Gone too is the warming orange filter that brought that 70s setting to life. The once modern cars have become classics, though thankfully due to the in-game garage, they can still be driven and customised before being taken for a spin on the test track. For £2 until January the 5th, I believe, well, you sure are getting a lot of game for your money, though I can't help but wonder if nostalgia plays a big part in the positive reviews these days. I find myself playing it and getting a big hit of nostalgia, not only for the game itself, but for 2006. Anyone alive in the 70s and old enough to remember the decade will probably get a triple dose of nostalgia. For the last part of this video, I wanted to test what is probably a silly theory. Does the performance of the game differ between the two in-game eras? Will the game run better in the 70s setting as opposed to the 2000s setting or vice versa? After all, there are a lot of visual differences, but do these change anything with our, how our hardware performs? Well, in specific areas, sort of, but generally, no. I set up two custom benchmark runs and found that there were no significant changes between the frame rate performance on average though there were some slight variations with the 1 and 0.1% lows. These figures differed slightly because there was steam coming up from the pavement in the modern era setting during one run that wasn't there previously, which is what I meant by the aforementioned performance changes in specific places. Changes in on-screen effects between the altered eras might cause the frame rate to dip in places where it didn't before. Generally though, there aren't really any major changes with the average performance, but I thought that it was worth investigating anyway. I guess you could say performance was affected, but only as far as the frame times go, and you won't really feel these differences when playing, or at least I didn't, not with this hardware. If you have less than £5 or dollars or euros or whatever to spend on a game between now and January the 5th, why not give Driver Parallel Lines a go? It's a hidden gem that you may have never heard of, but those who have might have forgotten about its charm, and it's definitely worth playing on PC in 2021, soon to be 2022, no matter how weak your PC is, because... Well, it will probably run with a somewhat decent frame rate, even if you've got a single core Pentium 4 and a 64 megabyte graphics card in your PC, which just so happen to be the minimum requirements. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know what you think of the game in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.